Hi, I'm Dave from Hector Smokehouse and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Gateway Drum Smoker. Hi and welcome back to the channel. Happy Christmas 2019 first of all and I've been fortunate enough this year to get a present from my wife for me and my son. We've got a Gateway Drum Smoker. I've always liked Gateway Drum Smokers, they always look excellent, I've heard really good things about them and I've been used to cooking on a pit barrel but I actually have been looking forward to trying one of these and seeing how it goes. And pit barrel's really good but a lot smaller and also uh, not the same sort of temperature control as what this has. So I've heard a lot of good things. A lot of my friends on the barbecue circuit have used um, Gateway drums in Australia and in, the, in, in America and have had brilliant results, won competitions with them. And the real benefit is you're actually starting to change the way you cook. You're starting to move away from cooking low and slow at 225 and cooking hot and fast at 275 to 325. So a lot hotter, a lot quicker, so it really condenses the time. So with this, something like a brisket, would typically take 10, 12 hours at 225. On this gateway drum, it's gonna be more like um, five to six hours at just over 300 degrees F. So it's not really for grilling, but it is for doing hot and fast, low and slow. So the low and slow cuts, the things you normally associate with low and slow, things like um, brisket, pulled pork, and um, pork ribs, you can cook on here a lot faster at a higher temperature, and it keeps the moisture in there. The barbecue itself, um, the, the, the paint that's on here is um, uh, supposed to work up to about 495 degrees F. You can buy a different version with some different paint, some heat resistant paint which is up to 1000 degrees F. But for me personally, I won't be really using this over 325 degrees, maybe 350 at the most. But it's only going to be around those sort of levels. So what I'm going to do today is just quickly go through the barbecue and show you some of the features. And then over the next month or two, I'm going to get more in depth into this. So I'm going to do a video um, which is going to go into how to light it, how to season it, how to set the temperatures to get the temperatures to where you want them to be. And hopefully there'll be a link above that that you can click to actually look at that next video. And then I'm also going to do a hot and fast brisket and some other meats as well over the next month. So you'll see a lot more of the Gateway Drum Smoker. So hopefully you enjoy the video. If you do, please give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel, that's really important for me. And also click the notification bell in the corner. If you click that, then it'll come up on an email and tell you every time that I put up a new video. So I hope you enjoy the video and let's get on with it. So this is the Gateway Drum Smoker. It's a 55 gallon drum, um, very well made, very solid, very thick material, heavy gauge. When you actually get it, it comes almost fully assembled. The only things you really had to do to this was um, the feet underneath, or these wheels underneath, they've got four screws in each of the wheels. So there's 16 screws to go in all together. All I did was um, get a, a drill with a socket on and just fasten them in, drove them in, and you just turn it upside down when you're doing that and bang them on. They go on really easy and that makes it really easy to actually move it around. So that's probably the main part. And then the only other part is putting on the temperature thermometer at the front and attaching that. Apart from that, everything else is done, so it's very, very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the insides and show you what's actually inside and show you uh, from the bottom upwards the heat deflector, the charcoal basket, and then the different levels. So this is the inside of the Gateway Drum. And what you can see in here is there's three different levels for different grates. So you can have two grates in here, you can have a heat deflector going across the bottom, which is an additional accessory. 
And here at the bottom, what you can actually see is a heat deflector. So this is where your basket's going to go. And this is going to protect the paint on the outside from getting too hot. And also at the bottom, you can see the intakes. So this is where the air comes in. There's one there and one there. This piece actually does lift out. Got to be a little bit careful trying to get it out, but you can lift that out. And it's got cutouts in where it actually goes and sits over the... So you've got the air coming into the fire at the bottom, and then obviously you've got your exhaust on the top, which is creating the draft and drawing the air through. And then you're adjusting the air intakes to change the amount of air coming through, which then sets up the temperature. Also what I've heard is a lot of people um, use speedy dry, um, absorbent material around the edges and around the bottom. And if you've got any grease that's actually dripping onto the bottom, that goes onto the speedy dry and then all you need is a shop vac, hoover it out and you get all that speedy dry out. So it's very simple, but extremely well made, really thick, well seam welded um, around it as well. So it looks pretty good inside and is really, really solid. So what we're gonna to have to do is make sure that we actually season this properly before we cook on it. So next we have a charcoal basket. This is a huge charcoal basket. So this means you're not gonna be having to fill up during a cook. This is very substantial and incredibly well made. It's got an ash catcher on the bottom and a little handle there where you can use a tool to lift this out. Otherwise you're gonna need gloves to lift it out, but it is really big and takes a hell of a lot of charcoal in there. So this is gonna mean that you can get really good long cooks. So obviously the idea of this is you're cooking on this top level, so you might have a brisket on here, and then down at the bottom is, is your charcoal. So you're actually over direct heat in most of the case, and that's okay, you just make sure you put the fat cap down when you're cooking on there. But what you can also do is if you wanted to have two levels of different types of meat going, so you might have some ribs and some ribs on the top, you can actually get an additional accessory, which is um, a heat deflector. So this is the actual heat deflector that you can buy. Uh, if I can get it in. And that goes in there and actually deflects a lot of the heat. You're still going to get some of the fat dripping down onto the charcoal at the bottom, creating the smoke and all the flavor that comes with that. But this is a nice way to actually make sure that you're not going to burn any of your meat at the bottom and it doesn't dry out too much. This is a, an additional accessory, but I think is well, well, gonna be well worth it. So the next part is the cooking grill. The actual gateway drum comes with one cooking drill, grill as standard. So there's the actual standard grill that goes in, very simple, just supported uh, through the threaded rods. So this is what comes as standard, but if you really wanted to, you could buy an additional one of these and actually set it to the level below. So if you want, you could have it at the level below. You could have racks of ribs on here. You could put another one on top of there and then have more racks of ribs. So you could probably end up um, putting maybe six, eight racks of ribs on there. But then there's also other additional accessories where you can hang ribs as well, which means you can get even more in there. So you could either put the ribs, if you was doing ribs, you can either um, put them on the racks as I showed you, or again, this is an additional accessory, which is a hanging rack. So you can see here, you've got these hooks that go into the ribs just below the, the biggest rib. And then you hang the ribs actually down over the fire. This creates a vortex of air coming through here because of the, the way these air intakes work, creates a vortex and comes out of the exhaust. And what I found previously when I've used my pit barrel is it's counterintuitive. You think it's going to burn the ribs, but it doesn't burn the ribs at all. So this is a, a really nice way of cooking. And this accessory comes with, I think it's five or six, six of these. Um, on there, but you could easily get more of these hooks and have 12 racks of ribs hanging over there. So it's a bit of a beast in terms of the volume of meat that it can actually cook. So you can also get other accessories. Um, this one is a scraper. Um, so you can get this, this is a scraper and also an ash catcher. So you can see on the bottom, you've got these perforations in, that fits the grill and you can actually clean the grill grates. And then also this will go in into here and will it's actually to the shape if you look at the shape there it actually matches the shape of the actual drum so it means you can get into the corners and actually lift out any ash the other thing you can use this for as well is if you turn it around the other way you can see it's got a hook on the bottom of there and you can use it to actually lift 
your ash pan out so your charcoal basket can come out as well. So this is a different accessory but it has three or four different uses. This is the lid of the gateway drum smoker. Again, very solid, very well built. You've got a handle to lift it on and off with and also you've got your um, chimney that you can adjust open and close. Most people actually cook with it fully open and then adjust the temperature using the air intakes and dial it down. Fortunately, you maybe can see there, man's come with a slight bit of the paint off the edge of there, which is a bit disappointing, but otherwise pretty good. The other thing you can do with this as well is you can take it off and it's got a hook on the side and you can actually hook it over the side and hang it on the side of the barbecue as well. So it's out of the way while you're actually um, working on this surface. So then you can just take it back off again, lift it up and put it back on. So the gateway has two air intakes, uh, one on either side. And obviously with those two air intakes going into the absolute bottom of where the fire is, you're gonna be drawing that air into there, creating this vortex going around, swelling around and then coming out of the chimney. Very nice and simple to move. And this is how you set the temp. So I'll go through and try and see exactly where this runs. But you know, you might have it a quarter of an inch or six millimeters open and that might be one temperature. Half open might be another temperature, three quarters open another and fully open a different temperature. So the other video that I said I was going to do, I'll go through those settings and see what it is at six mil or a quarter, half an inch, three quarters of an inch and at an inch. And then we'll see what it does and what the temperature goes to as you actually open these and close them down. On either side of the gateway as well, there is a handle. So if you empty it out, you can actually lift it by this, but it is quite heavy, but it's actually good just to be able to move it around on the wheels as well on the casters. But one of these on each side. Uh, the only thing that I'm a bit nervous with is when you hang the um, lid off here and put it off the side, it actually touches on there. So whether I end up putting something around here, some foil or something just to protect the paint so I don't actually chip the paint off. But that's the only sort of problem that I foresee along those edges is where you're hanging the lid on and it could just catch that edge. So looking at the front of the gateway drum, you've got a very, very nice looking logo on the front, which looks pretty professional and um, isn't sort of a cheap sticker or anything like that, looks really good. And then also down at the bottom, you've got um, a gateway drum a thermometer, um, which is their own brand, which again looks pretty good. Um, I think it's gonna be okay for what we're actually gonna use. What I might do is actually try and put um, a probe inside the drum, a, a digital probe, and measure it against this analog probe and see what the temperature difference is between the two. But I think for what we're doing, we're trying to cook hot and fast, so we're trying to do that 275, 325, close enough is gonna be good enough. It's all gonna be about the doneness of the meat and making sure you take it out at the right time. So I think that's gonna be more than fine for what we're trying to do. The other part that I do like on the front of here is these air intakes. They're very nice from an ergonomic point of view. Um, it's actually at a height where you stand to make them adjusting rather than being down at the bottom like a lot of uh, other barbecues are. And this is just very, very nice and at a height where you can work and the same with this one. There's very different difference in the height between the air intakes and the actual chimney. So it's very simple just to be able to adjust and move these. Also, I believe you can buy um, barbecue gurus um, accessory kits where you can actually put them onto here and have a guru fan blowing into the um, in, into the chim uh, into the charcoal basket at the bottom so you can have a really controlled temperatured cook. So if you want it to be exactly 325 degrees, you'd put a probe inside and then you'd put the barbecue guru onto here and then have it exactly at 325 degrees. So overall, I think this is looking pretty good so far. So hopefully you enjoyed that quick review and that quick tour around the Gateway Drum Smoker. I'm extremely excited to get one of these. Um, it's gonna be a game changer for me. Being able to move away from that low and slow 225 up to that 300 hot and fast is gonna be amazing. And I know that it gets great results at 300 degrees F because I've seen a lot of friends and people in the States cook on these. So the ability to condense that cook time, to be able to do a brisket in five hours, six hours instead of 12 hours, to be able to do ribs in maybe two, two and a half hours compared to doing it in five hours is gonna be amazing. And I can't wait to get started on this. Over the next week or two, what I'm also gonna do is put a couple more videos together.
The first one is just going to go through some simple basics around the gateway drum. It's going to show you how to season the gateway drum, also going to show you how to start it and then talk about different methods to actually start the gateway. And also going to go through temperature control where I'm going to do a few experiments trying to see how wide you need to open the air intakes to get to certain temperatures. The big thing with this is obviously controlling the temperature is going to be really important and that's going to be in the next video which should be up at the top because this can only go up to 450. You want to keep it below 450 if you can because of the pain of this model. So trying to keep it to that, that 325, 220, 275 to 325 is going to be ideal. Also, you're going to get another video which is going to be a hot and fast video looking at doing a brisket on here hot and fast and again, you should be able to see the video up at the top. I'm also really excited because this is Fire Engine Red. Um, those who know me who know that I've, I've cooked in competitions in the past, I've got a Fire Engine Red stump gravity fed smoker and this is going to go tremendously well with that. That's why I picked this colour. So I'm quite excited to be able to use that and maybe use it in competitions in the future. If you enjoyed the video and this quick tour around the gateway, please give the video a thumbs up. Um, please subscribe to the channel because that helps me um, know how many people are interested in what I'm actually putting out there. Please also add any comments down below. More than happy to listen to comments, both positive and negative, although the negative ones are a bit more difficult, but I'm also willing to listen to any of those. And please click the notification bell at the bottom. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.